Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and today I'm going to share with you this loose painting of a winter field with a lovely tree and a flock of crows. I'm beginning today with a piece of Ash brand watercolour paper, rough grain, size 9 inch by 12 inch or 23 centimetres by 31. I've got it taped to my board and laying flat. And I'm going to start today by wetting the top, uh, roughly the top two thirds of the paper ready to paint the sky. The colours I'll be using today are on screen now. Um, I'll also pop a full list in the video description as usual. But for now, you can see all I'm doing is using this nice big two inch flat uh, wash brush to bring the water down to cover roughly two thirds of the paper before switching over to my mop brush to begin adding a little bit of raw sienna into the sky. This is going to add a little bit of lightness, a little bit of brightness, uh, and now I'm just going to fill in the rest of the sky with some lovely blues. I'm using cerulean blue and ultramarine blue today. This is the cerulean going in now. It's a lovely pale blue and the ultramarine is just going to help give it a little bit more intensity. You can see I'm being quite careful to paint around the raw sienna I've already got into the sky and just sort of placing the blues beside the yellow rather than um, painting over it because I don't want to uh, mix them all up too much and make a green sky. Uh, I just want that raw sienna to uh, sort of peek through uh, these lovely blues and just give us that hint of golden cloud. You can see I'm just adding in more colour where I want the sky to become a little brighter and a little bit more of an intense blue shade. And you can see I've also just brought my colour right down to uh, just past the point where I wet the paper with my flat brush before so we get a sort of a dry brush horizon line here. You can see I'm just emphasizing it. This is just, um, I think, a really nice effect. Something you can do with a rough grain paper really easily is dry brushing. Uh, and I think this just gives a nice sort of raggedy effect um, that's gonna complement the rest of the painting, uh, the uh, sort of breaking up of that harsh line between uh, the sky and the land. Now I'm going back to my raw sienna uh, and once again just using this large mop brush to do some careful dry brushing uh, along this bottom third of the painting. This is going to be our lovely winter field. I want this uh, to feel quite sort of warm and earthy, this sort of uh, ploughed winter field. So I'm beginning with the raw sienna which is such a lovely warm bright colour. Uh, and really uh, getting that brightness in, but also leaving lots and lots of white space as well. Uh, that gives me lots of scope to uh, play with. Uh, and as you can see here, um, I'm just dabbing in a little bit of extra blue. This is uh, some extra cerulean I'm just popping in here. And these are going to be um, some puddles in our field. I think the rain has just passed through uh, and we've got some lovely puddles of water reflecting that uh, bright sky above. And now I'm coming in with some uh, burnt sienna here and just uh, following the same lines that I already laid down with the raw sienna and just layering it over the top and I'm also adding a little bit of burnt umber as well. And that just gives us a bit of depth of colour. You can see I'm using my brush really quite lightly. I'm sort of dry brushing a little bit over what I've already dry brushed, trying to keep um, those little flecks of white, uh, little glimmers, 
perhaps of rain or light reflected off this damp earth uh, peeking through the darker paint. You can see as well here that I'm uh, emphasizing these loose uh, directional lines in the foreground. This is a really fun and a really easy way to add a bit of uh, interest and detail into your foreground uh, without a lot of, lot of sort of fuss and a lot of hassle. And now whilst my uh, sty is still wet, it uh, hasn't quite dried yet, I'm able to add um, a little bit of pattern along this horizon line, a little bit of scrubby low sort of hedgerow along the back of this field. Uh, I started off using my uh, mop brush as you can see here, just the tip of it with a little bit of um, mixed up uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of raw sienna as well. Uh, but I wasn't quite, uh, <laughs> wasn't quite doing it for me, so I've just switched to a smaller brush, uh, and I'm just really uh, loosely trying to just scrub in a little bit of a tangled hedgerow here. Really, um, I'm mixing my colours up quite a lot. I'm actually bringing in a bit of ultramarine here, um, mixed in with the warmer colours, and that gives us some lovely shadows. A uh, really nice uh, way to add shadows without having to bring in uh, a black or a grey. And so I'm making the hedgerow sort of taller towards the left and sort of shrinking down as it um, goes towards the right and into the distance and of course becomes uh, a little shorter. Uh, but because I'm painting this in wet and wet, we're going to get these lovely sort of soft outlines of these shapes. They're going to diffuse a little into the damp paper uh, and that helps to get that sense uh, of them being in the distance as well. Now you can see here as well, I'm bringing in that, um, that's actually a little bit of ultramarine that I'm using to add shadows uh, to this field as well and just emphasizing those lines there. I like to think that perhaps these could be uh, tracks left uh, by a bicycle perhaps if somebody's ridden through here on an adventure or perhaps they're the tracks left by a tractor as it trundles across the field uh, sowing the seed that um, <laughs> that a flock of crows is very soon going to be going to be munching on by the end of this painting. So this is how it looks now that it's dry. Uh, I'm really pleased with how it's looking so far, lovely and loose. Um, so now that it's dry, it's time for me to add in uh, my lovely tree, which is going to be the focal point for this painting. To paint the tree, I am using my sword liner brush um, and a mixture of ultramarine and burnt umber to create this dark colour. And I really like uh, using those two as a mix uh, instead of black, because you can see this is very, very dark, but it isn't quite black. It has those sort of slight grey-brown undertones, which of course come to the fore more if you uh, add more water and really sort of lighten it up. Uh, you get this lovely sort of range of shades using uh, a mix. Uh, I also had those colours on my palette anyway, so it's always really nice to use up uh, the paint that you've already got rather than finding uh, a new colour. And as you can see, I've added plenty of water to the mix as well to start off with, um, so that my sword liner brush picks up plenty of this colour and allows me to do these sort of lovely long, uh, long sort of wiggly lines, <laughs> getting these lovely loose branches in. I've decided to make this um, sort of like a, uh, a stricken tree, you could call it. We've got a, a bit of a stump here down at the bottom, which I've put in really loosely. And then we've got the branches sort of growing up here from the right side and spreading out. Uh, I love these sort of old trees, but when you see them uh, sort of in the fields or walking through, particularly sort of in churchyards, that sort of thing, think perhaps what's the story behind them? You know, what happened? Was it a storm? Were they struck by lightning? You know, I love the little bit of history behind these sorts of trees that have been damaged in this way, but also, you know, survived and thrived. Uh, and this one particularly looks like it's uh, certainly thriving here. Um, I'm putting in lots of loose, long branches. I'm also adding in this collection of really sort of thin, wispy branches springing up from around that stump, around the lower part of the tree. Um, 
which again, the sword liner is fantastic for doing this sort of work, lovely springy, fine brush. Um, and you do often see this on sort of tree stumps or stumps that have been uh, sort of coppiced and cut back. You get these lovely long whippy branches growing out from where they've been cut down. And I'm also using this brush to really sort of root the tree into the landscape as well by bringing that dark colour down uh, and into the rest of the field. You can see the um, sword liner is being uh, very versatile at the moment. Uh, not only is it doing these sort of long, sort of wiggly root lines here that I'm just popping in, um, you can also use this brush um, really easily by laying it flat and just sort of um, brushing it gently along uh, the textured paper and getting this extra little bit of dry brush in. And you can see I'm just using it here to emphasize the um, the outside of this uh, puddle here that's uh, nice and bright, reflecting the uh, the sky above. Uh, perhaps the uh, the earth around here has been churned up um, by uh, feet of uh, animals coming to drink, perhaps, which is why it's a little bit darker <laughs> than the uh, the rest of the surrounding soil. It's always fun to uh, find the story in painting sometimes. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a few more branches. Uh, I'm not going to show you every single um, branch that I paint in this tree because um, it did take me uh, a little longer than is comfortable for the video. Um, but I am going to show you the important parts. So here you can see again, I'm using the sword liner to bring this lower branch up and through the ones that I've already painted. Um, really just using the, um, the shape of it to my advantage. The sword liner can be a little bit hard to control because the brush sort of tip itself is very long, uh, a little bit wobbly. <laughs> and... Uh, does sometimes have a mind of its own um, but that's fantastic when you're trying to paint loosely and you can see I've used it to add in uh, all these sort of lovely long thin uh, sort of whippy branches and at this point it's um, just a matter of how dense you want your tree silhouette to be uh, in terms of how long you want to keep going painting and how many branches you want to put in because this is quite um, <laughs> quite a big tree and he's really in the foreground, um, I wanted to make sure he had enough detail to really sort of stand out proudly uh, and really uh, look um, realistic but in a loose way, which is why I'm trying to really go quite loose with these branches, using the sword liner to get these sort of flicky, almost random effects. Um, but the last uh, step, for me at least, in uh, painting this tree is um, adding in these really, really thin branches just at the um, the ends of the sort of the main branches. Um, I suppose uh, twigs rather than branches, you could call them. Adding in these lovely little twiggy fingers at the end of the branches, just using the tip of the sword liner um, really lightly and uh, just really carefully going in and just doing them quite randomly, quite loosely. Uh, for me, that's just a really nice finishing touch for um, a winter tree like this, which is very bare. Um, he's yet to grow his leaves back, bless him. I think this is um, a pretty good uh, indicator as well of just how much paint and water this lovely little brush can hold. You can see how many of these uh, lovely thin branches I'm able to paint without having to return to my palette and pick up uh, even more paint and even more water, which is such a handy thing when you're painting something like this. Um, for anyone who's interested, the brush I'm using is... Um, from Pro Art, it's just their synthetic um, sword liner in size small. Really, really handy little brush.
now I'm just using it to uh, bring a little bit of interest, a little bit of verticality into this uh, surrounding um, bit of darker earth here, just bringing in some perhaps little twiggy bits growing up or some just some really loose grasses popping up uh, in the foreground here, just to add a bit more interest into uh, this land. Then just trying to keep this uh, really loose and really sort of um, simple, sort of classic landscape. Just a little bit of extra interest in the foreground there. And uh, now that that's all dry, um, so I don't need to be concerned about smudging it with my hand, which I've done before, um, I'm going to paint in uh, my flock of birds. So uh, I am painting in a flock of hungry crows that have no doubt turned up to see what are the, uh, the spoils of the ploughed field, be it seed or perhaps little insects and worms that have been churned up by uh, passing feet or passing machinery. Uh, and I'm painting them again using the sword liner uh, just because uh, for me I like the sort of stretchy, raggedy effect that you get from this very springy uh, brush tip which sometimes doesn't quite go <laughs> exactly the way uh, you want it to or the way you expect but I think for a flock of crows that really works quite well because uh, they can be quite raggedy looking birds sometimes especially if they're sort of soaring in every which way buffeted by the wind they've got those long uh, sort of pin feathers uh, wing feathers that spread out almost like fingertips uh, and they can look a bit wild and a little bit ragged so that's my raggedy flock coming together here uh, of course you could use something like um, a small round brush uh, or a small sort of fine detail miniature brush would uh, work really well as well here if you wanted something that gives you a little bit more control uh, and a little bit more dexterity. And of course you don't need to paint in nearly as many birds as this. I just love crows so I wanted to fill my painting with them. And here we are, this is the finished painting. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this, um, I certainly really enjoyed painting this today, uh, it's great fun so I really hope that you enjoyed watching along as well. Uh, any questions or comments please pop them below, uh, a huge thank you to all of you who've already hopped over to my Patreon page by following the link below uh, to sign up and help support this channel, to help support my artwork, hugely appreciated, big shout out and a big thank you to you all. Uh, but that's all from me today. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. And in the meantime, happy painting.